Welcome back. Um, I'm making a, a small series here with um, uh, with my trials and tribulations of trying to make a power drawbar for my um, sile mill, Sally the Sile. Uh, so um, let's uh, roll the tiles and we'll get into it. Right, my design criteria is, has been um, to try and make an electric power drawbar, um, which has proven to be really quite tricky. Um, most people, I think all, nearly all commercial machines are either hydraulic or pneumatic, uh, and a pneumatic one has got three, uh, what they do is put three cylinders, uh, stack them on top of each other to get sufficient surface area, so about 100, 120 pounds a square inch pressure is enough to squash the Belleville springs in the in the um, uh, draw bar and uh, pop the tool out. Um, however, I I think that a lot of people out there in the, the hobby world haven't got um, access to a, a consistent air supply. Uh, you know, lots of people have small little air compressors and yeah, maybe that's the way to do it. Making the cylinders is quite expensive. Buying the cylinders is hideously expensive. Um, but making an electric version actually strikes me as being quite a reasonable idea. And uh, um, so I've been fiddling. It's taken me nearly two years so far and I still haven't finished. But I thought I'd, um, I'd start this series and we could uh, have a little look-see. This, this is currently what I've got. Um, this does and doesn't work. It does work, but it doesn't work properly yet. Uh, I'm still working on it. Uh, anyway, more details on this in an upcoming video. Uh, I may even junk this and actually come up with another solution. I've got another idea that might well do the job. But um, my first... Uh, the, the, the whole issue... The, um, uh, I originally made a very simple power draw bar and uh, the details are, are, are coming up in the next segment of this uh, this video. Uh, and that worked a treat. However, vibration seemed to uh, cause the tool to walk out. And uh, once the tool had walked out, it's cutting deeper than it should do. The sparks fly, the mill stops, and um, all hell breaks loose. So um, uh, watch this bit of video, and, uh, and I'll pick it up in a video I shot nearly a year ago I think now so uh, you'll you'll see where we got to at the end of this This cutter, hence the piece of red tie wrap around it, got graunched up. Com focus, got graunched up completely as uh, as it got pulled out of the collet in the in the mill. So, we go over to the mill. I took off my electric power drawbar, and uh, I found some real mistakes that I'd uh, I'd put in with this in terms of design. Got it all wrong. So I'm going to start again with that. Um, hang on. It's very simple. There you go. Couldn't be simpler, really, could it? Anyway, this can exert um, around. It's got uh, 500 newtons uh, of, of stall torque. Well, available torque, shall we say? Um, and it's a 10 to 1 10 to 1 lever so effectively it should be able to put 500 kilos of force onto the drawbar however 500 kilos is insufficient so if i just uh, th these the, uh, the the cutter that you saw crash got pulled out vibration is the is the main issue uh, so what I did was I took the drawbar off, as I said, and this is difficult for me to see at the top of this mill, but I reassembled the 
um, the drawbar with the Bettelville springs in it and to do this last dovetail that I cut here uh, all I did was tighten the drawbar up till I felt it had got enough tension I thought well the thing to do is to measure it so back over here this is my not easy to do these things one handed so this is my torque wrench half inch torque wrench however it's minimum the minimum force that it can apply is something like 25 newton 30 40 50 odd newton meters uh, 20 40 42 what's that um, 30 to 40 40 something newton meters it's too much that force is more than you need so i bought another one this one is quarter inch well this is going well there we go and the minimum that's difficult to read on on there is actually seven newton meters so what i intend to do is use this torque wrench little one Talk up the tools as I need them in the mill, run the operations and see if I get any tool movement. If I get tool movement I know I need to increase it a little bit more. Um, the, the thing with this is it doesn't need to be accurate, it just needs to be repeatable. So as long as I can set the um, set the the set the Belleville springs and power drawbar up in the vise and I can then torque it to the same settings as I get on the mill then I know I have sufficient tension on the Belleville springs and the drawbar in order to stop the tool from getting pulled out that's the theory um, also uh, if I just this tool that that's a 10 millimeter but it's really too there's a lot of stick out from from the collet I can measure that I can tell you how much that is let me just get a go into the cupboard of delights there we go look that's four inches or a hundred mil from uh, from the flange to the roughly to the tip of the mill so that that means there's a lot there's a lot of mechanical advantage on the for the cut to pull the tool out so i made another one this is a 10 mil tool but this has been recessed in as far as i can get it and clearly you can see there's a, there's a distinct advantage we're now down to 75 mil 76 mil three inches so i've knocked an inch off the available um, mechanical advantage for, from the, the work in the tool so that should improve things um, that came out rather nice actually even the blacking worked quite well on that one yeah pleased with that so uh, what I will do is I've got my embryo cutters there including the two that went manky I've got my new cutter and if I go over to the lathe and grab one of the tool holders, here we go. Right, here's one of the tool holders. I will use, there's the dovetail that matches the dovetails that I've cut. I will use the this to hog out the material and the cutters uh, for the for the. New, uh, for the tools to sit and that will give me a good indication because I'll, I'll see if I can drive this quite hard into the into the work that will give me a good indication as to how much tension I need on the drawbar there seems to be very little info out there on the uh, on the web about how to you know what's a, a good range of, of um, 
Torx to put on the drawbar. So th this, I think, is the best bet for me to find out how much I need. I'll let you all know as it as the job progresses. And um, once it's done, then I can. I'll have, a, I'll have numbers to work with, which then gives me a fighting chance to redesign my power drawbar with the right mechanical advantage in order to squash the Belleville springs, but not uh, not allow the tool to come out. So, uh, so it's, a, it's a bit of a juggling act, really. But that's uh, a quick update as to where we are with the power drawbar. It's in progress. I've just been so busy as to... Uh, at work we're in the run up to Christmas and that's always chaos on legs. So that's where we are. I haven't had time to do any more than make a new tool holder and buy a new uh, talkie wrench. But we're getting there. Excellent. If you have any suggestions, do let me know. Oh. Right, uh, sorry about the wordiness of this um, um, old episode but uh, hopefully that gives you a flavour of what I'm trying to do and, uh, and where we're going. Thanks for watching, please uh, hit the subscribe and the bell button and um, join me next time when I go into a lot more detail as to why, uh, what I've done, what I've done and why it's gone wrong etc. So uh, anyway that's it for this part, we'll see you in the next one.